Hi beautiful people! Today's video is going to be quite a doozy. It's going to be my speed reviews of I think 17 empties. This is going to be my last but huge beauty empties video of the year. And as you guys know from my last video, I am no longer going to be posting regularly. I'm not sure when I'm going to come back to YouTube. So I just wanted to put all of my empties into this one video to get it over with, get these damn packages out of my house. It's actually crazy that I accumulated this many products in such a short amount of time because I didn't do an empties video for the past two months and that was because I didn't have enough for a video and all of a sudden I have so many for one video. So I'm going to do speed reviews. This is the first time I'm ever going to do speed reviews but it's only because I have that many products to go through. As you guys know how my empties go is that I will tell you if I will repurchase get rid of the product completely or if I replaced it with something else. As always, I have everything linked in the description box down below including timestamps for the video or chapters and related playlists and videos. The first empty is the Baby Dove Tip to Toe Wash in Sensitive Moisture Fragrance Free. I hauled this wash last year at the start of the pandemic because I was looking for something that was gentle for me to use from head to toe. I thought if I could find something that was like a three-in-one where I could use it on my hair, my face, and my body, I could cut out that many products in my routine. And for just a very short while, it was working out until my scalp started to itch way too much for my liking. I mean, obviously I don't like an itchy scalp, but I've dealt with an itchy scalp for many years because of global warming. It's making my skin much more reactive than it pretty much always has been. And this is when I stopped using sulfate-free shampoos. They just don't do it for my hair and my scalp anymore. Then I tried it on my face and that was really nice because this is very gentle and it does lather for something that's sulfate-free. Unfortunately, I was having problems with my fungal acne at the time as you all know. And that's when I figured out that this was making my fungal acne worse. I ended up using it on just my body and it was fine for that. Again, it's very gentle, it's fragrance free, it actually doesn't smell like anything which is really good and because it's baby dove it's formulated for babies. So very sensitive skin. I wouldn't repurchase this because I don't know if it causes back breakouts but it definitely doesn't make my back feel like ultra clean. It feels like it leaves this sort of film on your skin but I think it's just because it's sulfate free and it adds moisture and I don't need that for my back but overall I think it was a great wash and if you're interested in trying something that is just no frills then I would recommend trying this because this is a three-in-one product and it doesn't work for me with those three things anymore. I replaced this with the Aussie, I think, Moisture Shampoo and Conditioner. For body wash, I've been using the Aveeno Restorative something wash. Everything will be on the screen right here and linked down below. And for my face, my favorite cleanser of all time so far, the Vanna Cream Cleanser. The next empty is the Curel Itch Defense Fragrance Free Lotion for Dry Itchy Skin. I don't remember when I bought this, but I'm pretty sure I bought most of these things back in 2020. And this is actually a great lotion if you have itchy and dry skin. I learned that if you have eczema or if you have irritated skin, you would benefit from ingredients like urea and ceramides and typically lotions that address dry and itchy skin have ceramides and this one has an advanced ceramide complex. It has a really nice buttery smooth texture. It takes a while to sink in because there's shea butter in here but it provides adequate moisture without making your body feel like there's a film sitting on top of it. But there's one thing I have to mention about it that is why I will not repurchase this. It's not bad. It didn't do anything for my itchy skin, but honestly I feel like the itchiness for me depends on whether or not global warming wants to give me a break or it wants me to suffer. I actually depotted it or scooped out the rest of it because as you can see it's missing the pump here, but I dropped it because it's such a long and narrow bottle. You can see this texture, it's 
pretty thick, but when you rub it in, it feels really nice. You feel the moisture there. So because it's thicker, I tried to use that both day and night, and I hated it. I am probably one of the very few people who moisturize both day and night, and when you use something thick like that during the day, it does leave that film and you will feel it for the entire time until you go shower. So I've been using the CeraVe Daily Moisturizing Lotion every day since the pandemic started and for a while I didn't want to because when I tried using it on my face, it stung my face and I bought this like two years ago and I stopped using it. I tried to use it on my body and I hated it. I think it might have like irritated my skin a little bit so I was really scared to use it and I told my husband that when you come here you're probably gonna like using this on your body because you like lighter weight lotions but I decided you know what I can't because the pandemic is still going on and I don't know when I'm gonna see him and I don't want this to go bad so I decided to use it on my body one day and it works and I'm showing this to you also because it isn't empty I have a little bit left in here about this much and the reason why I prefer to use this in the morning is because it is so much lighter weight. As you can see, that is completely gone and it doesn't leave that nasty, disgusting film on your skin. So I would recommend using something lighter during the day and then something heavier at night. There's just something about having damp skin after a shower and putting on a thicker lotion that doesn't make you feel like you have something on your skin. I'm not sure if I'll repurchase the Curel lotion. I typically like to try body lotions, different ones all the time. I don't know why, but I think it's just because my face is just more problematic than my body, so I don't mind trying new things. And also, I prefer to use fragrance-free products on my face than my body. With that said, since I finished this up, I replaced it with the Josie Moran Whipped Argan Oil Body Butter, and this is what I showed in one of my empties, this giant box of her 10th anniversary body butters. And some of the scents in that set are exclusive to QVC, which is where I got the box from. And this one is Warm Amber. I linked two different products on QVC's website for these tubes, in case you're interested in these tubes and not her body butters in the tubs. And unfortunately, she doesn't have the 10th anniversary box anymore, and they don't sell all of the scents, so. Whatever I linked is, I guess, whatever they have or whatever they have left. And I have been enjoying this a lot. As for the CeraVe Daily Moisturizing Lotion, I don't know if I'm going to get this again. It's really nice to use during the day. I did feel like it moisturized me enough, but probably not during the winter. Which is really weird to say because global warming is making this winter absurdly warm. But during the summer, this was the perfect lotion to use in the morning. And it doesn't leave a sticky residue at all, but CeraVe for some reason is for me hit or miss. The next empty is the Suave Naturals Daily Clarifying Shampoo. It doesn't even look like this anymore and I don't even think that it's called this anymore because when I went to link it for you, it's now called Suave Essentials Daily Clarifying Shampoo, which I mean, it's essentially the same thing, I guess. But that one is 30 fluid ounces and this one is 22 and a half. So obviously that one is bigger. I didn't really like this shampoo. At first I did because it just has that like classic shampoo smell, but I think it left like a really gross film on my hair that never seemed to wash out. And this is a clarifying shampoo, so it's supposed to really go in there and do a deep clean. And I never really felt like my hair was that cleaned. I mean, it says it's for normal to oily hair. I have oily hair, didn't really do much. I had it for eight or nine years. My husband ended up using it like two or three years ago and he liked it, but I'm not gonna repurchase this. I replaced this with the clarifying shampoo that I used many, many, many years ago that I actually truly missed a lot and didn't think that I needed because I have virgin hair, I don't do anything to it, and I didn't think that I needed a clarifying shampoo that whatever shampoos I was using were fine. It's the Neutrogena, I can't even remember what it's called, clarifying shampoo or something. That is an incredible clarifying shampoo. If you use product in your hair, I would definitely recommend 
using a clarifying shampoo at least once a week. So if you use dry shampoo especially, you're gonna have a lot of product buildup on your scalp and your hair. I use it twice because my hair is so oily, my scalp, and I do put a lot of oils in my hair and I really want all of that to come out, but it just does this incredible like reset. And I used it last night. I always pair that shampoo with my hydrating, like deep, hydrating hair mask. And that's the Shea Moisture one in my favorite scent of theirs. And my hair looks and feels like really incredible. It's super shiny, it's smooth and frizz free because oh my god my hair has been so frizzy this year. Well especially this winter, this really really weird winter. Oh my god I totally forgot that when I finish this up I'm going to use the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Body Gel Cream. And you guys know about this if you watch my different updates because it pretty much has the same same formula, same texture, where it's just very lightweight. This is a gel cream. It's fragrance free and it's moisturizing. I did try it on my body when I first got it before I tried it on my face and that ended up being my summer moisturizer. But for the body, it just feels so cooling and there is adequate moisture. So don't think that because something is lighter weight that it just can't possibly moisturize your skin. The next empty is the Neutrogena Tea Gel therapeutic shampoo original formula long-lasting relief of itching and flaking it controls the symptoms of dandruff seborrheic dermatitis and psoriasis this I bought last year and I did use it twice a week which is directed on the package you're supposed to lather in your hair like a normal shampoo and then leave it for a couple minutes it started to get too high maintenance for me to have to like stand there for two minutes and then rinse and repeat. So I stopped using it in my hair twice, but I still used it twice a week. And then I also stopped just leaving it in my hair. I just don't have time to stand in a shower, you know? But I will not repurchase this because I don't think it really did much for my itchiness. I did buy this last year because I was flaking and itching like crazy. I wasn't sure if I should try the Nizerol or Nizerol shampoo. I think it's Nizerol, which is the ultimate anti-dandruff shampoo besides head and shoulders, but I think Nizerol is stronger than head and shoulders. So I bought this one instead and it's also bigger. I had my mom try it because she was dealing with dandruff last year as well and she didn't like it because it didn't do anything for her dandruff. Luckily for me my dandruff subsided and I just have itchy scalp. I have itchy scalp all the time no matter what. I shampoo every day with a sulfate shampoo, but I don't know, it's just global warming. But the Nizerol shampoo worked for her, it got rid of her dandruff, and when it came back, she used it again, and it went away again. So I will not repurchase this because I just don't need it. And again, it's just so difficult to tell if a product really works because global warming will just do crazy things to me all the time. Maybe in the future, if I really need like an anti-itch shampoo, I could try it again, but I just, at this point in my life, don't need it right now. I'm gonna take this off, you guys, because this stupid light is making me sweat and I'm talking really fast and speed reviews is not my thing because I like to spend a lot of time telling you guys about products, but okay. This shampoo was replaced with the Neutrogena shampoo that I just talked about. Not to say that that's an anti-dandruff or anti-itch shampoo, but because it's super clarifying, it does help to, you know, like I said, reset your hair and get rid of any buildup that would lead to dandruff and itch. I hope I get through this faster than that part because I have this entire box here full of stuff. I used up my Sensodyne Fresh Mint toothpaste and I did enjoy this. I actually used it for so many years because I used those Crest 3D white strips or teeth whitening strips, which work. Okay, they really, really work. You know what they also work on? Destroying your teeth. I now have the most sensitive teeth I've ever had in my entire life. And somebody told me to use Sensodyne. And that's when I started using the Fresh Mint one. I didn't know they had a whitening toothpaste. And for the longest time, because I was using Crest White Strips, I was using the Crest 3D White line as well. I used the mouthwash and the toothpaste. Now I don't really care about whitening my teeth. I just want to maintain the shade, like the natural shade. So I started using the Sensodyne Pro Enamel Gentle Whitening Toothpaste, which is incredible. By the way, Sensodyne toothpaste 
works. If you have very sensitive teeth, use Sensodyne toothpaste. I was talking to my dental hygienist the last time I saw her and she told me that unfortunately, once you have sensitivity in your teeth, it will never go away. So using a Sensodyne toothpaste consistently will help to minimize the sensitivity. This one is great. However, I just bought from BJ's yesterday the, I think, extra whitening Sensodyne toothpaste. So not the pro Namel line. If you suffer with, you know, acid erosion or, you know, you just eat a lot of things that have acids in it, then definitely go with the pro Namel one. But I actually enjoy the normal Sensodyne one. So I saw that at BJ's for a four pack, in a four pack, and I bought it. Yeah, so I replaced the fresh mint with the extra whitening one. This is not an empty. My empty is in the shower because I forgot to get it before I started filming. This is the Zapsit Acne Wash Cleanser and you have seen this multiple times in my empties. I think this must be my third bottle that I've gone through since the pandemic started. This is the best body wash for acne or body acne I have ever used and that's why I no longer use body scrubs. This has 2% salicylic acid, which works incredibly on my back knee, especially. Paired with the Japanese Ceylon, 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 not, you know that, okay, like I'll put on a screen here, the very gritty body cloth. I no longer have to use body scrubs, which kind of like destroyed many showers over the years and like clogged drains. I mean, I love a coffee scrub like the next coffee addict, but that was such an annoying cleanup after I used them. I use this every day in the shower on my back and my chest. I also put it on areas that were just like freshly waxed, but I also concentrate this on my feet because they are looking really raggedy this year. So this obviously is a new one and I will continue to repurchase this. This is fragrance free, which is an added bonus. You can use this on your face if I didn't mention that already. I don't because I don't like to use harsh cleansers. I also have been using, you know, like other acne products. So this is only just for my body. I also used up another bottle of the ACT Kids Anti-Cavity Fluoride Rinse. This is in Bubblegum Blowout. I really want to try the other flavors, but I get these in, I think, a two pack from BJ so I get the most bang for my buck. I mentioned this once before and not again even though I went through I think one or two bottles because I didn't want to like keep showing the same things over and over again but this is a great anti-cavity rinse. I haven't had any issues knock on wood. I don't know if I have any real wood in here so my desk is fake wood. But anyways, I haven't had any issues. I just went to the dentist. Everything is fine. And it tastes delicious. It does taste like bubble gum. You gargle with this for one minute, spit it out. And you only use this at night. And obviously I repurchased it. The next empty is my favorite eye drops. And this is the Blink Tears lubricating eye drops in the blue bottle. They do have different ones. This one is the one that my ophthalmologist recommended that I pick up because I suffer with dry eye pretty much ever since I started working from home and started doing all the social media stuff. You know, I look at screens all day, every day, and you have seen this multiple times in my empties as well. I will continue to repurchase this until the day I die. And speaking of eyes, this is the Bausch & Lomb eye wash. I started buying eye washes because of a beauty YouTuber who I have been watching for many years, many, many years. She disappeared like a lot of other beauty YouTubers and then kind of came back a little bit. And her name is Beauty QQ. She introduced the eye wash to her viewers because when you're wearing makeup, a lot of it goes in your eyes at the end of the day when you go to take it off. I can't tell you how much of a difference I experience or feel or see when I use an eye wash after I remove my makeup. So what I'll do is I'll use my eye makeup remover, I'll use my cleansing oil for my face makeup, I go take a shower, wash my face, and then I will use this. Because if you use it right after, you know, your face is not cleaned yet, 
it'll sting because, you know, you still have residue. It comes with a plastic cup, which of course I forgot it in the bathroom. The new one that they come with is so ass. So I kept the one with this one, which is the older packaging and it works so much better. So basically what you do is you fill up your cup that they give to you halfway and then you tip your head back, hold the cup to your eye and then swish it back and forth and like roll your eyes around and everything and then rinse the cup, do the same thing with your other eye, rinse the cup. It really gets in there, cleans everything out. When I have like eyelashes in my eyes or just any type of dirt, it doesn't need to be makeup, I will use this and the thing will come right out. And my eyes are completely like renewed. It's kind of crazy how clear your eyesight is after that or your vision is. And then I will go in with my blank tears because the cleansing power of the eye wash just drains my eyes of every moisture drop in it. Oh, I forgot. I have another toothpaste here. Yes, the Crest 3D White Vivid Mint ultra toothpaste. This I didn't really like. I bought too many packs of this and I thought the flavor was disgusting, but I don't know what happened in the past. Yeah, pretty much since the pandemic started. It doesn't taste bad anymore. I don't get it, but this is the last one that I have and then I'll use Sensodyne forever. But this is a really good toothpaste. Crest 3D White is what kept my teeth so blindingly white when I was using those white strips. And then I maintained the whiteness without using the white strips because I at least knew at some point to stop using those stupid strips. I mean, we had a good thing going. I forgot to mention that, yes, I have repurchased the eye wash over and over again. And because I went back to wearing makeup, I definitely had to buy more. The next empty is the Pharmacy Deep Sweep 2% BHA Pore Cleaning Toner with Moringa and Papaya. I have not emptied this yet, but because I will not be coming back for a while, I just wanted to put it in this video and I will be finishing this within the next month or so. And I did talk about this in my latest different update video with my skincare update. I think it's a great salicylic acid toner. I used it all over my face one time when I forgot to use my prescription acne treatment and it made my skin look really smooth and clear. I wish I could use it, you know, for a prolonged period of time so I could give you a better review of it, but unfortunately with all of my acne. Salicylic acid doesn't do that much for me. So I initially bought this because of the sebaceous filaments in my nose and salicylic acid is supposed to make those I guess like less apparent or melt them, get rid of them. But you know, those are normal. They're supposed to be on your face. They protect your pores, yada, yada. And of course, not to my surprise, this did not do anything for them. But as a toner in itself, for clarifying the pores. I think it works really well. I think it makes your skin look smooth and clear and actually gives a little bit of a glow. It is not fragrance free, so if you are allergic or sensitive to fragrances, do not use this. It has like different extracts in it, but I find it to be really pleasant, you know, for something that is more like, I, I well, pharmacy is considered, you know, clean beauty. It doesn't smell like medicinal. It just is, very light. And if you have oily skin, you would definitely benefit from a salicylic acid toner in general, but this one is really nice. I will say that, you know, it's kind of a pain in the ass to recycle because it's heavy, it's glass, and I think I have dropped this once and thank God it didn't break, but I think it's because they made the glass like super industrial strength, but also it costs like $30. So if you want an alternative to this toner, the Pixie Clarifying Tonic, and I really like that toner because it also has AHA and AHA and I get together really well. The percentage in salicylic acid and AHA in there, not disclosed, so I don't know if it's 2%, at least with this one you know that it's 2%, but I will not repurchase this because it doesn't do as much for me as benzoyl peroxide does and also adapalene with different. And yes, that is a very red rash because I am sweating so hard. So hopefully that will subside by the time this video ends. The next empty is a makeup one and this is the Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effect Mascara. I showed this so many times in my previous videos when I did beauty stuff because this is my favorite mascara ever. Well, 
I actually love the CoverGirl Lash Blast in waterproof, but I stopped using waterproof mascaras because, you know, I learned that waterproof mascaras over time really weaken your eyelashes. And because I have to curl my lashes every single time I apply mascara, it's a double whammy of say goodbye to your lashes. This is an incredible mascara, not only because it gives your lashes so much volume and length, but it's only $4.99. And a lot of drugstore makeup is super expensive these days. I always pick this up when I'm in Germany because they have an essence section in their drugstores. And over here, we don't have that unless, of course, you shop at Ulta, which I don't. This is not the waterproof version, but they did bring out a waterproof version years ago, and I've only ever heard bad things about it. If you have six straight Asian lashes like I do, try this. I would repurchase this, but I'm not in Germany and I don't shop at Ulta, so I have to wait. So for now, I've been using L'Oreal Double Extend Mascara that has like the white priming side and the black mascara side. And it's not great, but it doesn't smudge. It weighs my lashes down, but the reason why I bought it was because that's when I gave up on waterproof mascara. And that one is... I forgot what you call that mascara that comes off with just water, but it's a great everyday mascara. It looks natural just because it doesn't hold a curl ever. This is the Now Solutions Vegetable Glycerin 100% Pure Versatile Skincare. What? I use this for my DIY makeup setting spray, and I've used this for many years. And I learned this from Gothic Mista here on YouTube and well, more like on Instagram now, but I used to watch her YouTube videos all the time. I mix it with a toner. Of course, I no longer have a gentle toner. I'm still using the one that I made before the pandemic, which I should probably make a new one, but I just mixed it with a gentle toner, shake it up, and then spray it on my face after I apply my base makeup before I do my eye makeup. And it works really well. It's glycerin, so it adds moisture to the skin, but also glycerin is so sticky that it just keeps your makeup on. I will repurchase that forever because I cannot justify buying a makeup setting spray for like $30. I can't do it. And I don't know what else other ingredients are in there. Most of them have fragrance in them and I'm not interested in that. So making my own is working for me so far. However, I am very nervous because I just said I don't have a toner. Like, I'm not going to mix that with my salicylic acid toner. So I'm going to have to figure that out. Oh, wait, actually, I didn't have to put that with my toner. I ran out of my big bottle of 100% aloe vera juice. Aloe is very soothing. And as you can see, I'm very rash prone. I have the Neutrogena Oil-Free Moisture with Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 15. This is actually not my MT. This is my dad and brother's MT. Somebody didn't finish this up. So my mom had to dump the rest of it. I was really pissed off. I remember I tried this one time a long time ago and I didn't really like it because I have very oily skin and sunscreens tend to make me super greasy. But my dad and brother have not complained for the past, I don't even know how many years. So it's fine. My mom wanted me to buy another sunscreen for my dad and I picked up the Cetaphil Daily Facial Moisturizer with sunscreen broad spectrum SPF 15 again and actually I wanted to try this. I tried this on a day I went out with my parents to go grocery shopping and actually it was pretty nice. It's very easy to spread. I like that it has a cap that you can twist to close and open. It's very lightweight. It sinks into the skin. It is a chemical sunscreen, so you will not get a white cast with it. It does smell like sunscreen. It's not gross to me. I mean, I never really hated sunscreen smells. It reminds me of the beach, which I haven't been to in a very, 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 very long time. But it is fragrance-free. It has UVA and UVB protection. It's non-comedogenic, lightweight, and non-greasy. This is the CeraVe SA Lotion, salicylic acid lotion for rough and bumpy skin. I also have shown this multiple times in my videos because it is the like the best salicylic acid lotion for my back knee and my chest knee. But I mostly use it on my back. My chest, I use the toner. 
I wanted to use this all over my body and not just for my back knee, but it's not heavy enough for my body. After a shower, I always need so much moisture, but I will repurchase this because it works so well for my back. The texture is kind of the same as the Curel one. It has a little bit more substance to it than a normal lotion, but it doesn't leave a greasy film or a film at all on your back or wherever you put it on your body. They do have it in a tub and it's a cream, so I will try that, I think, next winter or whenever it's cold and I will get back to you on that. If you suffer with rough and bumpy skin from, you know, you have chicken skin or something or you have, you know, crusty feet like I do or body acne, definitely try this. I tried this on my face just like the other CeraVe products, same thing. It just like broke me out and stung. And lastly, this is the Alcina Skin Manager AHA Toner. This, if you have been following me for at least three years, you know that I get this when I'm in Germany. Well, I used to. I stopped using this because it has the most pungent fragrance. There is so much fragrance in here. It is so nauseating. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it that I would still be able to smell it. I cleaned it and it smells so strong. It's not a gross smell at all. It actually smells super good. I don't even know how to describe it though, but it's like perfumed. Not great for sensitive skin types. Not great for those who are allergic to fragrance. But what I did like about it was that it has AHA in it. It left my skin smooth, clear, soft, and my husband liked it too. But yeah, the overwhelming fragrance, just so crazy. And there's actually quite a bit of alcohol in here. So it wasn't great when I used it during the winter when my skin is more compromised, my skin barrier, my eczema comes out. So I have not repurchased it and I will not repurchase it. But if you are in Germany and you're looking for an exfoliant, you can get this at DM for I hope the price didn't go up, but this was $10. And that's it for this giant empties. I have been filming for 23 plus 23 plus 10 minutes, very long. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed talking about all of these, so I don't regret how long it is. Thank you so much for watching my empties videos. If you still enjoy my empties videos and you want me to continue doing them when I come back from my hiatus, my sabbatical, which is not gonna be 10 years, but I wish it was, then please give this video a th thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you love my company. I don't only do life chats. I love to do beauty content as well. But if you do like life chats as well, then you're more than welcome to join this community. And if you would like to see more empties, you can check out my playlist here or these related videos next.